Hey guys, it's me, Coral. I'm back again. Um, today I'm doing something not book related though. I'm going to be doing my monthly movies, which is something I started doing when I started my channel, but I haven't been very good on keeping up with it the last couple months, partly because before the last season of Game of Thrones aired, I was doing my annual rewatch. So most of my extra time that I would have spent watching movies went to watching Game of Thrones. But I've got some movies to talk to you about from this month and some from April too that I just felt like I wanted to discuss. So as always, I'm going to break things down by genre. Last weekend I watched, I rewatched some movies that I used to watch, me and my best friend used to watch movies from the early 2000s that were like the teen thrillers kind of. The first one is Swim Fan, which came out in 2002. This is so cheesy and so good. Um, I'm glad that I rewatched it because it's been a long time since I've seen it. Probably like 10 years. This is about a high school senior who is on the swim team. He's getting scouted for a prestigious college, hoping to go on maybe to the Olympics. And all of a sudden there's a new girl in school and she becomes obsessed with him and tries to ruin his life basically when he, when he rebuffs her. Um, so very much like the teen drama thing that I feel like the early 2000s are well known for those movies. They were so good. Um, in the same vein, I also watched Valentine, which which came out, <laughs> meow meows. My cats always decide to find each other uh, while I'm trying to film. Anyways, Valentine, this came out in 2001. This is about um, a group of adults who are friends from middle school and they're slowly being killed off by this killer wearing a cupid mask, like a little cherub mask. Um, and they think it all calls back to someone that they knew in middle school. Very much that like cheesy thriller. It actually has a lot of big names in it though. Um, it had, I have to look it up. It had Katherine Heigl in it, Denise Richards. It had David Borinas. I don't know. He's from Angel, I know, but I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, it has Jessica Capshaw. She played a character in Grey's Anatomy. Um, yeah. Uh, so it, it's surprising to me that so many people have not seen this because it has so many big names um, in it. Okay, I also watched, I actually on Mother's Day went and saw Detective Pikachu with my family and I thought it was so good. I grew up playing Pokemon. I still play Pokemon. I do. I obsessively played Pokemon as a child. So it was really cool to see those characters as we might see them in real life if they were real, which is something that I wished for like with all my heart just that we could have pokemon <laughs> when i was a kid um i thought detective pikachu was good i think that they did a really good job with the pokemon which was the biggest thing i think for me at least um the plot was good too but i really loved the pokemon is that really nerdy <laughs> am i like exposing too much of my secret nerd life Okay, so as far as the horror goes for April and May, um, let's see. The one I disliked the most was the remake of Inside, which came out in 2016. The original film was French, and I can't remember when that came out. Maybe like 2009 or 10, 8, 9, 10, somewhere like that. And I really liked the original. It was so good. It was like gory and really tense and um, probably one of the most horrifying 
things that somebody who has been a mother could ever imagine. When I originally watched it, I was very young. It was not a mother. I was not close to being a mother, but looking back on it now, it's really a really intense situation. So I saw that the remake was on Hulu and I was like, I'm, I don't know, let's see what it's like. And basically it was the same. I, it was the most pointless film I think I've seen in a long time because it was the storyline, the same exact storyline from the original film, except they made it less tense and less gory. So it was like, what what was the point here? You didn't add anything new at all to this film. And in fact, you like took some of the goodness away. So why did you, why was this made? Was it just because Americans are too squeamish? Like we had to tone it down for us? Big disappointment. Pointless, it's absolutely pointless. Oh, I, I haven't even told you what it's about. What's wrong with me? So it's like a home invasion movie. Main character is an expecting mother. She is like ready to pop at any time. And someone tricks her, gets into her house and is trying to basically steal her unborn child from her. It's really intense. The original, I mean, if that sounds interesting at all to you, Definitely watch the original as long as you are into horror, I guess, because it is, like I said, it's very gory. It's a very, very intense. I've said that 20 times by now. So if that um, doesn't tell you how intense it is, I don't know what will. I also watched a movie that I have heard about for so long and I'm not sure why I didn't ever take the time to watch it and it was Lake Mungo which came out in 2008 and this is like a found footage film which I really really love. I know that that's so overdone in horror but I still I love that so much and it's about this family. Their daughter goes missing and they're trying to kind of like figure out what happened and they're talking about some things that happened in the past and what what had led up to her disappearance. I've heard this so like highly lauded. Everyone who likes horror talks about it and says it's so good. Well, not everybody, but a majority of people, you know what I mean? So I finally watched it and I was not impressed. There was like Okay, I will say that there, because the movie is kind of like, I don't know, it, it seems kind of like serene almost, even though these people are talking about the disappearance of their daughter. It's like calm, kind of, I don't know. So there are two parts that were really strange. And I think um, because the rest of the movie was so kind of like dreamlike, and calm and kind of strange. It was like uncanny valley that these parts that I'm thinking of were so strange. So maybe that was the point was to make those parts more effective. But overall, I thought the movie was just kind of boring. I, I don't know. Besides those two parts, nothing much of interest happened. I'm obviously not going to tell you what those two parts are because you might want to watch it. Um, I think it's worth the watch because even now that movie kind of sticks out in my head, even though I didn't really like it. I don't know. Um, I'm conflicted about it, I guess. Hmm. I think it was done well. I like the found footage, like I said. It just um, wasn't quite what I expected. Next, I want to talk about The Silence, which came out this year, 2019. It was a Netflix original starring Stanley Tucci and it had Kiernan Shipka, I think her name is pronounced. She was in Mad Men and more recently, um, The Legend, Sab The Sabrina Show. I haven't watched that. I think it's too teeny for me. Anyways, this is a lot like the movie A Quiet Place, if you've seen that. But The Silence was originally a book that came out before A Quiet Place did, so the parallels are not purposeful. But it's a lot like A Quiet Place. There are like these 
prehistoric like they look like pterodactyl bats that are discovered in this like closed off section of this like underground network of tunnels and caves and they start attacking people and they like follow sound so you have to be quiet or they're gonna hear you and they're just gonna eat you so it's a lot like a quiet place uh and i i thought that i thought that the movie was good but it's very evident that like this was a book so there were a lot of things that felt very not fleshed out all the way if that makes sense I felt like there were themes that just like weren't explored well enough. They just like kind of skimmed the top off of everything. Uh, for example, without giving anything away, there is this um, group of survivors that they come across that are um, bad guys. And that's just, I just wanted to know more about that, which I guess that makes me want to read the book more, which I have. I own the book. I haven't read it yet. Um, I don't know. I didn't really like it. I don't know. It just didn't feel deep enough for me. I also watched another new release. This was The Prodigy. Well, it came out in 2019. I actually just watched this last night and I was so disappointed because, oh man, I've just seen things about this for so long and people saying they're so excited for this. And I saw like, a, I don't usually like to watch trailers because trailers give a lot of the movie away, I feel like. They just show you like all the good parts. So then when you go to see it in the theater, it's like, I already saw <laughs> any of the scary parts. So there's nothing left for me. Um, but I did see a little part of this trailer. It's like this tiny little like 10 second clip. And I was like, ooh, this is creepy. So I really wanted to watch it. It's about um, this like, genius boy who starts to do really bad things and his parents are trying to figure out why and it's just the whole idea of it is just like so overplayed I feel like and I don't know I I guess it won't be a spoiler to tell you this part because it happens literally in the first minute of the movie but the soul from this serial killer is like reincarnated into this baby when he's born. And it so it's like basically the fucking plot of Chucky except for that it's a child instead of a doll. I don't know, it was, there weren't any parts that were very creepy to me. Um, it was definitely, there were parts of it that were dark because it deals with a child doing bad things but I don't know. I think that the actor, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was Georgie in the uh, remake of It. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that though, because I haven't double checked. But he was a good actor. He was really great in the movie, but I don't know. I just, none of the other people were great actors. It actually has Taylor Schilling in it from Orange is the New Black. And I don't think that she is a great actress. So I don't know. It was just fine. It was worth the watch, I guess, because it explored some things that maybe not a lot of movies would because it deals with a child. But I don't know, nothing special. I was disappointed because I really looked forward to this one. On to two that I really loved. These are both rewatches for me, but it's been a number of years. I think I watched both of them when they first came out. So it's been, I don't know, maybe four or five years. But the first one I'd like to talk about is The Visit, which was an M. Night Shyamalan movie. This came out in 2015. I watched it when it came out and I was like, I guess this is okay. But then for some reason I really wanted, I like, it came up on my like um, Amazon Prime like suggestions and I just decided to watch it again. And you know what? That movie is pretty freaky. Uh, there's just a lot of like really weird shit going on in that movie. And it's not like um, scary, scary. Like it's kind of a, I'd say it's more of a quiet horror. And that makes the parts that are creepy even creepier because it's just really like, it's one of those movies where you're like, something isn't 
right here, but I don't really know what it is. And also, I keep doing this to you. I tell you, <laughs> I tell you what I thought about the movie without telling you what it's about. I'm sorry. The visit is about um, this like 15 year old girl and her like 12 or 13 year old brother. They were going to visit their maternal grandparents for the first time. Uh, their mom and their and their grandparents had a huge falling out before they were born. They've never really reconciled, so this is like a big step in the relationship between their mom and their grandparents. And the girl is an amateur documentarian. Is that right? I don't know. And she's trying to make like just a little home video about it to kind of like, I don't know, capture the moment. She wants to ask them some questions about her mom and them and, and what happened and why everything, why they're falling out happened and all that. So it's another found footage film, which I love, like I said. So it's their, their first time meeting their grandparents. They don't know, the children don't know like what to expect. They kind of have stories that their mom has told them about her childhood, but even their mom hasn't seen them in like 15 years. And they get there and everything's like, okay and good. And it's like your grandparents, um, the grandma's like making cookies and spoiling and the grandpa's kind of quiet and he does like outdoors stuff. And then uh, like things start happening and they're kind of strange and you don't really know if it's like just because the the grandparents are obviously elderly like are these problems that these are problems that sometimes elderly people have so you're not sure if it's that or what it's good it's good um it does get pretty intense i will say the ending is kind of meh um, I don't know, not meh, it's just like, it's not quite as good as the rest of the movie, if that makes sense, but endings are hard. But I like it, I liked it a lot, I liked it a lot more than the first time I watched it on my rewatch, it's very good. The shining star this month, as far as the movies I've watched, was definitely the rewatch of The Green Inferno, which came out in 2013, I think. That's what IMDb told me at least. And this is a lot like um, the movie Cannibal Holocaust, if you've ever seen that. Uh, it's about this group of college activists who go to South America. They're trying to protest deforestation, I believe. And um, they get taken by the group of natives that they're trying to like protect by protesting the deforestation, if that makes sense. I don't think I'm explaining that right. I don't know. Um, and it gets freaky. And um, this was directed by Eli Roth, who also did the Hostel movies. So it's very gory. It's kind, there are parts that like I thought were really funny actually, uh, but I don't feel like that comedic stuff took away from the scariness of the movie because it's really tense. It's scary. You feel the sense of dread and peril for a lot of the movie. Uh, so it's like kind of nice when those kind of humorous parts happen because it like it's like this build up, this build up, then something sort of funny happens. You're like, oh, and then like it lets you build up the suspense again. And I really like that. So um, I know I liked it the first time I watched it, but I think I appreciated it more the second time around. Not for the faint of hearted at all. This deals with a lot of cannibalism. There are people being dismembered. If you don't usually watch horror movies or if you don't really like gory horror movies, Let's stay away from that one. But I thought it was super great. And that's all I have for you today. I need to keep doing these. I, I love doing these. Besides books, I think movies are probably 
probably my second favorite form of entertainment. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. I will leave some links to my book-related social media in the description if you'd care to follow me or take a look at that. Um, I don't know. I, I think that's it. That's it though, right? I mean, I told you about the movies I, I watched. <laughs> Anyways, it's getting close to the end of the month. So I will be doing my haul and May wrap up soon. So keep an eye out for those. Um, but until then, I guess, see you later.